Coming up on this episode of Design to the Nines, I've got five way cool dirt cheap DIY decor ideas with a Santa twist. So let's get started. Welcome to Design to the Nines. If this is the first time we're meeting, I'm Natalie Callahan and I'm so glad you could join me today. Now, if you've been following my Way Cool Dirt Cheap episode, I give stuff for free away through the whole episodes that will help you complete these DIYs. Now, it might be a little bit early for Christmas, but <laughs> this year I'm just ready for Christmas to come early. I don't know about you. How about this set? If this is a look you want to recreate, I'll go ahead and link the original episode where I show you how I did my original pink peony flowers. It's the same process. I've just used poinsettias and I picked these up from Hobby Lobby. And now I'm so excited to get doing my Christmas DIYs. I've got a ton planned for you. Today we're doing five that are kind of Santa themed. My first DIY usually involves a wood round. Well, guess what? <laughs> there is not a wood round the right size to be found anywhere in the Orlando area right now. So I had to improvise. So I'm doing a different DIY this time and what I had planned, I'll sneak in to a later episode. So for our very first way cool dirt cheap DIY, we are going to be doing a decorative letter to Santa. As you can see, I've got this free printable here. It says the Callahan family up here in the corner. On the printable that I will be providing you, it will be blank in this area. So you'll need to do something on your own to fill that in. This is not my actual address, just as an FYI. Now I print this out at Staples in a color print. And I believe to print out this size was, I think, like 75 cents. The font that I used was Shadows into Light 2 and I did it in a 28 point font. Or you can just do something that looks similar to it. It doesn't have to be this exact font. I'll put a link for all of the printables that I'm gonna be doing in the description box below. You're not gonna wanna miss it because I've got some really cute stuff. Then I have this wood piece. I ordered a bunch of these in bulk off of Amazon, but I think you can pick up something similar at a craft store, at Hobby Lobby. This is 12 by 24 inches. However, we only need 12 by 19 inches. And I think I've seen some that are 12 by 18 inches already cut, ready to go at Hobby Lobby and some other craft stores. I'm going to go out and cut this down with my saw, but you could get away with 12 by 18, no problem. And then I'm going to be using some of these paint sticks, like the long ones. They come in th three in a pack. So what we're going to start out by doing is we are going to take some white chalk paint and we are going to paint the entire base of our wood in a white chalk paint so it's got a good foundation. So while we're painting stuff, we're gonna paint our paint sticks in a black chalk paint so that the frame is black. You could stain them too if you want a stained frame, if that's the look that you wanna go for, but I'm gonna do black because I've got black in the font and I think it will just tie it all nicely together. I like to paint these with the handle still on them and then cut off what I need later and then just do a little bit of touch up paint. That way I can just paint like any side that I want and not worry about getting my hand dirty. Now I might cut mine down on my miter saw just because it's a little bit easier for me, but I've cut these down with a Dollar Tree hacksaw before, so that's no problem at all. Before we add the frame, we are gonna now do an image transfer technique. You know that if you've been watching my channel, I like to do this technique. So I use Liquitex Matte Gel Medium. It works so good, I love this. I've tried some other products. They don't work as well in my opinion, but use a gel medium that you like, but this is the one that I recommend is Liquitex, not sponsored, I just like them. And so we'll just take a paint brush and brush on the Liquitex Matte Gel covering the entire canvas. And we do a generous amount. And then we're gonna take our image and we're gonna lay it down face down, trying not to move it too much, but trying to get it lined up a little bit first. And then we're gonna just smooth it out with our hands. And then we're gonna let that dry fully, probably at least two hours, but you wanna make sure that it's fully dry before you start to remove it. Now, once it's fully dry, we are going to take a wet washcloth and have a bowl of water on hand, and we're gonna just kind of dip our washcloth in there and get our the back of this paper really saturated. And then you will notice as you kind of rub it with a washcloth that it will remove some of the paper, but the image will remain. It's a really cool technique. I love this technique. Mm -hmm. 
And then once we're happy with the way it looks, then we can let that dry. Then we will attach our frame from the paint sticks by using some E6000 and hot glue for instant stick. And once that E6000 dries, it will be really sturdy. It will work out fantastic. And that's it. Isn't this so super cute? So for me, because I bought this in bulk, and I think that you could probably find something similar, I spent about $2 on the piece of wood. And then I spent a little over a dollar, around $1.33 for our frame <laughs> and then a little extra in paint and supplies and of course our printable we're looking at about five dollars for this it's so cute it's worth every penny of five dollars and it's something that will last you year in and year out and have a custom piece with your family name it's awesome i love this and i hope you do too So for my last Way Cool Dirt Cheap, I did a Halloween theme, and in that, I did these really cute trick-or-treat wood tags. Now that we've done that, we've got the back that we can do something with. I like to do dual duty if I can get two holidays out of one. And so we've got a blank canvas on the back side. If you missed this tutorial, I'll link it below on how I made the wood tags. Essentially, I cut them down on my miter saw. You could definitely do this by hand with a miter box so you don't have to have the power tools. I am just a huge advocate of power tools. I love them. They open up a whole world of possibilities. You know me, I like to be powerful. Powerful. We cut those down and then we sanded them down and then we made these really cute trick-or-treat tags. I love this. So in keeping with our Santa theme, one of our tags is gonna be painted out in Santa look. So we're gonna take some red paint and I'm gonna be using this Tuscan Red by Americana. And then we're gonna paint that out all red. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a black belt and we're gonna create using painter's tape a gold belt buckle. So in order to do that though, you know I don't like bleeding, so what we're gonna do is paint the same color that's underneath to prevent that bleeding so we get a nice crisp line. So the paint that I like to use for gold is Folk Art Pure Gold. It's part of their Metallics line. I love this gold paint, it's my favorite. Now for the right tag. We are gonna paint that all out in white chalk paint. And then I have another free printable for you. It says Santa, please stop here. And you can just lay that down and use graphite paper to transfer the image onto your tag and then you fill it in with paint. Because I don't have that steady of a hand, using a stencil that I've created on my Cricut machine is gonna just be easier. So that's what I'm gonna be doing to get that nice crisp look. And so I'll put my stencil down and then I will put that white over the top of it so it doesn't let any bleeding happen. Then we're gonna take the Tuscan red paint and paint the Santa and the black chalk paint and paint the please stop here. And once that's dry, we'll peel back our stencil. Now, if you wanna make your own stencil, you can use the same image, download it into your Cricut software, and you will be set to go, and you can make your own stencil out of that. But if not, go ahead and use the image transfer technique. It's awesome. It works for most people. I just really like to use the stencil. It really, really helps me get the job done faster. And that's it. If this is the first time you're making these tags, it will be a couple of dollars to complete. But if you made them last month with us, and now you're getting a second use out of it, it's just a little bit more in supplies and that brings that cost down for you to maybe a 75 cents to a dollar. So this is really affordable. I hope you're enjoying what you're seeing so far. You're gonna wanna stick with me to the very end because I have a very fun special announcement and an awesome free printable that you are not gonna wanna miss. So stay tuned for that. I am so excited for this next DIY because we are gonna be making a Santa pillow. And what's really cool about it is I didn't have to buy anything. This was all in my stash, ready to go. I didn't buy it specifically for this project and all of it is super affordable. So here's what we have. I had some red cotton fabric in my stash. You can get this for, I don't know, if you can find it on sale, maybe 
$1.50 to $2 a yard, really, really affordable. I already had it, so it was good to go. They sell this microfiber cloth at Dollar Tree, and I'm like, that would make some really good, like Santa trim at some point. So I bought this a while back. Then I had this black grow grain ribbon from a tutorial last year. It was my Santa wreath, you can see here, and I still have some. Then I have this roll of faux leather is in a gold sparkle. I use it to kind of make earrings out of. So we're gonna use this for the belt buckle. Now I'm gonna cut mine out on my Cricut machine just because it will cut it more precise and be a little bit quicker for me. But I have provided a pattern for you. So this is gonna be all a part of these printables that are gonna all be at the same length that you don't have to go to multiple different places. But if you want to do this and you don't have a Cricut machine, all you need to do is print this out on your printer and use this as a pattern. You're gonna take the measurements of an existing pillow. Just take one of your regular pillows from your existing decor and this is just gonna be a temporary cover for it that you can use during the holiday season and then remove afterwards. Say it's an 18 by 18 inch pillow and add an inch and a half to each side. If I am using an 18 by 18 inch pillow, you're gonna cut out a front square to 19 and a half by 19 and a half inches. Then we're gonna be doing kind of an envelope style. We'll do plus five inches on either side so there's a little bit of an overlap. You're gonna need two pieces, 15 inches by 19 and a half. I hope that makes sense. So you're gonna add five inches to each one of those back flaps so they can overlap, but the width stays the same. I hope that you're following me on this. So for our fur trim, we are going to take about four to five inches. If you're doing the 18 inch pillow, you're gonna cut it to 19 and a half by four and a half inches. All right, so we're gonna sew, and I don't wanna lose you on this, so just hang with me. Now I'm gonna be doing a full sewing tutorial here in the short future, just so that when we do some of these Christmas sewing projects, I can refer you to a sewing basics tutorial if you haven't ever done it. But I promise you that if you've never sewn before, you can do it. I learned to sew when I was eight years old. It is totally doable and I don't want you to be scared. So what we're gonna do is I have pinned our little fur, fur <laughs> our little cleaning cloth <laughs> and I've pinned it to the center of our pillow. I've kind of lined it up and it's right where it should be. Now I've picked number 15 as a stitch for this because it's kind of going to match what is already on there for a stitch and we're going to go all the way around and it's not scary. I promise we got this. What I like about this sewing machine is you can slow it down or speed it up depending on your skill level. So if you're nervous, you can turn the speed all the way down and it won't go fast even if you push it all the way down. And then all you have to do is press down on the pedal and we will get sewing. All right, I can speed up, I think. Now that we've got our fur stitched on, it looks really cute, it's perfect. We're gonna take our black ribbon and our belt buckle that we made out of the faux leather, so cute, and we are gonna just weave it in by going up and then down, so you can see, then it looks like a belt buckle. And then we're just gonna center this on our pillow front and we are going to pin it to the sides and then we're gonna stitch this black belt into place right in the center. Now, if you wanted to, you could top stitch the belt on. I don't think we're gonna need to just because I think the push from the pillow will hold it into place. Could be wrong, I might eat my words later, but I think we're gonna be okay. Lucky and fortunate for us, the ends of these were already hemmed, and so all you do is fold it over and stitch it down and then make sure it's nice and ironed because we are gonna be doing an envelope pillow cover. We don't have to put in a zipper and it's just gonna be temporary. We're putting it over a pillow that is already part of like my regular decor. 
so we don't want it to be permanent. So an envelope pillow cover is a really good option for that. So in order to do that, we have the two finished pieces that have an additional five inches on either side, and that allows you for a seam allowance, and it also allows you to kind of just overlap. And so what we're gonna do is we are gonna take the unfinished corners, we're gonna put corners together, and we're gonna pin these. I'm trying not to put pins in my mouth because people have told me that's dangerous and I know it is. It's just a bad, nasty habit, so I'm not doing it this time. And then we're gonna kind of smooth this out a little bit, right? And then we're gonna take our second piece on our unfinished edges and match those up to these corners and make sure your finished side is down. This is such an easy way to make a pillow, really. I almost put it in my mouth. Can't do that anymore. I gotta set a good example. I promise you sewing is not that hard. Like I tell you all the time, just get a little brave. Something that you haven't done before, but it's one that you can totally learn. Okay, we're doing the same thing on the other side. Basically, I've got a pin in every corner and two in the middle of each panel. Now we're gonna just sew all the way around. and then we'll clip the corners, and then we'll flip it out and we'll reveal our pillow cover. And then we have a really cute Santa pillow cover to cover up one of your regular pillows that you use in your everyday decor. So we've got a couple bucks in ribbon. We've got maybe 75 cents in the gold glitter, $1 in the fur trim, and a couple. So we're talking no more than $5 for this cute, pillow cover that is so adorable and so festive and so traditional Christmas. It just screams it, doesn't it? So cute, I love this pillow. So next up, we are doing our wood canvas. If you've been following me all year on these way cool dirt cheap episodes, you will know that we have this wood canvas. Actually, it looks like that and you can pick it up at Walmart for about $5. It's 10 by 10 inches and we've painted the interior a white chalk paint and the frame portion black and we've used it like this for every single way cool dirt cheap episode so last time we did this october 31 it's so cute and what we do is i just cut this out in craft paper and i've attached it with some silly putty not silly putty. Silly putty would probably not work as good. So tacky putty. And so what we can do is just very carefully peel this off of the frame and reveal a blank black and white canvas. So this time what I've done is I've created a printable. I have printed it out on a red and white striped paper because I just thought that that would be really festive for Christmas. This is an eight and a half by 11. Now the width of this actually fits in there pretty good. And so then we will just need to cut off a little bit of the top and a little bit of the bottom for it to be centered in our frame. Now, all I'm gonna do is tack this down with the same tacky putty so it's not permanently affixed because we like to use this over and over again. So I'd like to use it again. I picked up a package of four of these little chalkboard tags at Dollar Tree. They're gonna work perfectly for this because it says days until Christmas. And all we're gonna do is right in the middle between days until and Christmas, we are going to glue this. I'm gonna just hot glue this to the paper. Now there's a little hole because this is meant to be, I think like a gift tag or some kind of tag like that. But I saw these at um, Hobby Lobby and they're just little holly and berries. And all I'm gonna do is hot glue one of these to cover up that hole. And then you don't even know that it was meant to be a tag. So this is very flexible to whatever you want to do for your decor. Honestly, I got my red and white striped piece of paper at Hobby Lobby on their four for a dollar sales. So we're a couple of bucks into this. And if you are doing the frame for the first time, you need to add that on. It will be an additional $5. But if you've been doing these all along, then you've got like 75 cents this version. I just love that because if you're using it holiday after holiday after holiday, it just brings that price down, 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 down. And I love that. And you can use the same piece of decor over and over and over. I love these really versatile pieces. So another really affordable, really cute Santa themed DIY. 
So my favorite part of these way cool dirt cheap episodes is designing the awesome free printable, the main event, if you will. It's just my little gift to you. And as a thank you for watching and supporting my channel, this one, I am so excited about it. So this was our print from last month, Trick or Treat, Smell My Feet. <laughs> I loved doing this printable and I'm really excited to share with you what I've got this time. So I have designed this one with this red vintage Santa print. I love it, it's so cute. This is my favorite DIY because it's so easy. All you have to do is have it printed out and all we need to do is just stick it in the frame and call it a day and it's so easy. I love that part. Now I also designed several other vintage Santas so if the red doesn't work in your scheme, I also have this green one that will be for sale in my Etsy shop. I also have a teal one that is also available in my Etsy shop and all of the Santas come with the French stripe so if you want the French stripe on this red Santa one it's available in my Etsy store now also to match this print and the green print I'm doing a limited run pillow cover I'm so excited about it so it is just the cover and it matches all of these prints and then I also have it in the green I love them <laughs> but this is a limited run once I sell out they're gone and that's it. So as far as cost on this, this is a frame I've had forever. So I've always just called this frame for free. It's one that I think I picked up at a thrift store for maybe a dollar many, 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 many moons ago and then just painted out in a black color. The one that I'm showing you here today is in a 16 by 20 size, but you can also shrink it down. So the only cost that I have invested in it is for the print that I had printed at Walgreens. Make sure you use a coupon and and so that was $7.99. So that's the total cost for our huge 16 by 20 piece of art. But if you wanted to do something a little bit smaller, you could put it in a Dollar Tree frame, print it out on your own printer, and you have it for maybe like $1.50 for an eight by 10 size. If you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. If you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to see you around next time. And to all of my DIY Niners, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye.